We are starting out with transthoracic lateral, and this is for shoulder. This is a trauma exam, okay? We're gonna have our IRN lengthwise, and I know you've got it kind of moved, I'm gonna mess you up a second. IR is going lengthwise, because we're looking at the, the humerus, right? So if this is a transthoracic lateral, it can be used for shoulder or humerus, because we're looking at proximal humerus and, sh and scapula, the orientation of the two. So what we're doing is our patients come in, their trauma situation. This patient has hurt her left arm, okay? So she cannot move her left arm. We do not expect this patient to rotate her arm, move it around at all. So we just put her all the way up against the IR. We are going to have the patient stand shoulder, feet shoulder width apart. That's gonna give her a wider base, wider base of stance so she doesn't sway a whole lot and keep her uh, more still. So 10 by 12 is the collimation. And you did have that already and I messed you up when I opened up the bucky. So I'm gonna take that collimation back to 10 by 12 lengthwise, y'all. We're going to remember with the long axis of the humerus. We do not um, adjust body position until we get all of these things set up. You can kind of go ahead and eyeball when you get your patient up against the bucky where the surgical neck is. Y'all remember humeral head and then surgical neck is below it. You can go ahead and kind of center the center of your IR to the area of the surgical neck and then you'll be able to adjust that once the patient gets in the true position. All right. We are doing a true lateral. Remember your lateral chest x-ray? Remember how you had to have your patient nice and straight? Their body's going to be perpendicular to the IR. No rotation between the scapulas. Y'all remember that? Same thing for this, all right? So we've got our patient, I'm gonna step you forward just a little bit. We do want that humerus to be over the center chamber. We're gonna take the right arm, because her left arm is her affected, this is her unaffected arm, get her to bring her forearm across the top of her head and just relax your shoulder as much as you can. There you go. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to separate the unaffected humeral head from the affected humeral head. We don't want those two superimposed on top of one another. So when she brings up the unaffected arm, that's gonna give us a difference between here's affected humeral head and then unaffected is gonna be higher up. So we're kind of separating the two, if that makes sense. Once I have that unaffected arm up, then I've gotta make sure I'm coming in mid coronal plane. So this is where you have to make sure your patient is nice and straight. Check those scapulas. All right, make sure humerus is over center chamber. Notice here how small your light field is. You see how small that is? That's because her part is so close to the tube. So this is not the true size of your field, right? It gets larger as it goes through the patient. Remember this to this is your 10 by 12 lengthwise from here to here, all right? Some patients you will be able to see light, some you will not. This is your 10 by 12 box, so you need to make sure your marker is there. Now what, I'm sorry, what side are we marking? Left side, right? Her left side is up against the IR, so we're gonna make sure we are marking the left side. Shield our patient. Just check here. I'm gonna bring you more forward or we've, or we've wiggled a little bit here. Now, mid -coronal, I'm coming down mid-coronal plane, exiting out of the humerus, feet are shoulder width apart. Two different things you can do for breathing. You can either get her to take a big breath in and hold it. If she's moving a whole lot, that's what you wanna do. If the patient can stay pretty still like you are, you, know, you wanna use a breathing technique. 
What that means is we're gonna get the patient to just practice taking in slow, deep breaths. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Slow, deep breaths. And we're gonna let her do that while we expose. The reason for that is what? Less movement and more circulation. Well, we're, we're actually adding movement, right? We're adding motion by letting her breathe. What do you think this is gonna do for us? The, um, It'll decrease the, um, the exposure. It'll decrease exposure. Have you ever taken a picture of somebody and they're in motion? They're running? Mm -hmm. What does it do? It's blurry. It's blurry. Mm -hmm. If you try to take a picture with an actual camera and somebody's waving their hand real fast, yeah. their hand will actually be gone. Have you ever done that before? Mm -hmm. The body part will actually be cut off because it can't. it's moving so fast. What's happening here is, you know on a chest x-ray how you have all those long markings? Here's some right here. See all these little white lines? Those little long markings? So what we're gonna do is when we allow her to breathe, that is going to blur those lines, those long markings, and give us better detail of the bone. So we let her breathe, it's called a breathing technique. And that's a question test love and registry loves. What exams are, can you use a breathing technique on? Transthoracic lateral is one of them. And there'll be more that you'll learn about, okay? So 10 by 12 lengthwise, mid coronal plane is where we're centering. We're exiting out of the surgical neck of the humerus. Patient has to be in a true lateral. We're gonna shield. Never open your collimation up, up more than 10 by 12. I know you're seeing this light field is very small here. You still stick to 10 by 12 lengthwise. Trauma exam, okay, done for proximal humerus. Questions about this? You can stop that, that um, question.